everyone and welcome back to my channel Melanated Beauty. I know I've been absent for a while but I'm back with a super fun, super exciting DIY ottoman flip. I picked up some ottomans a couple months ago and I am finally doing the second one. I already did the first one. If you haven't seen that video, please go check it out. Um, that was when I was in the super boho scene and I just <laughs> went crazy on it but now I'm going a little bit more minimal and I'm going to be trying out the boucle trending fabric design look now the fabric can be a little pricey so I am going to be using different material the Sherpa a lot of people have been alternating with that fabric and this design turned out so good I can't wait for you to see the results and the process of it all it was super easy to do now before we get right into the video please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already i do thrift flips like this all the time furniture makeovers room makeovers i just love home decor so if you like that kind of stuff please subscribe now let's get on right into the video so here is the ottoman that i am going to be flipping it is a retro ottoman. I actually got two of them identical to each other for 20 for both. So $10 a piece. And as you can see, it's beat up, it's dirty, and it's just not cute. And if you haven't yet seen how I upcycled the other one, I'll leave that video in the description box below. I made that one very boho and um, it was actually kind of a Dollar Tree hack. I used this fringe, this hula fringe that I got from Dollar Tree to make it a little boho statement moment and I'm kind of over that look right now. I'm more into more modern trending looks like this boucle ottoman fabric. As you can see, CB2 has their own version. This McGee & Co. has their own version for $430. So I'm going to be using some Sherpa fabric from Joann's. Uh, when I purchased mine, it was on 40% sale, so only $7.79 a yard. Um, but before I get into that, I'm going to give this a really good scrub down because it is very dirty after sitting in my mom's shed for I don't know how long. Now here is all the materials that you'll be needing if you're going to recreate this look. I got two yards of the Sherpa fabric from Joann's and that was only $15 but when I paid for shipping it came to $20. And you'll need a staple gun lots of staples and some scissors particularly fabric scissors and now this fabric was super plush and so soft i wanted to just curl up with it on the sofa i believe the boucle fabric is more of a rougher textured fabric if i'm not mistaken but this fabric it's actually soft and it looks just like it so it's a win-win um, what I'm doing now is I'm going to be cutting out the size of the top. So a large circle piece with about two inches more fabric to hang down um, because I'm going to be stapling that and then layering over top of it. So I started from the corner of the fabric so I could like stretch the fabric as much as possible. And I'm just tracing out around that top. Now that I have that piece cut, I'm just gonna lay a heavy tray on the center top. So as I'm stapling, it's not going to shift around. And I'm just going to pull a little taut and staple all around. Um, being sure to staple about an inch and a half or two inches down because we are gonna be going back and stapling another layer above those staples. So you wanna make sure you leave space above this. And once this piece was stapled down, I just went back and trimmed off any of the extra fabric. 
I will say if you have fabric scissors, it's going to be so much easier to cut this fabric. Now you'll see here how I'm just moving around and playing with the fabric to make sure the way I'm going to be adding it is going to work. Basically, I am going to be stapling this to the very top edge, but upside down. So when we flip it back, it will be very seamless and you'll see no staples. So achieve this look and to have it very nice and clean, you wanna make sure your staples are even and somewhat close together like no gaps. So I'm just taking my time and I'm lining up my staples and I'm just going all the way around. Now, usually you would wanna take the remaining fabric and measure out the circumference of your ottoman or whatever furniture you're using and cut out enough fabric for it, but I ended up just using the fabric as it was left over from me cutting out the top piece, if that makes sense. And then once everything was stapled, then I would cut any extra that I had left over off. So once I had everything stapled for the top, I just flipped that fabric right back upside up. And as you see, it became an issue. This is where I got a little scared. I thought I didn't have enough to close it up. And I'm just staring at it like, oh my gosh, I think I messed the whole thing up. But after pulling on it and messing around with it for a little bit, I realized the material is very stretchy and durable. So all I did was just pull it very taut and I stapled it down and it ended up being enough and closed up very nicely. Now, before I decided to staple down and finish off the closing, I went on and I trimmed off the extra fabric, leaving about two inches so I could staple the bottom. This was to make sure that I didn't end up stapling it and then having to go back and take it off. So another good thing about this fabric is I didn't have to like flip the inside so you can see the staples. I just stapled right on top of the fabric and because of the material being so fluffy, you could not see any of the staples. So that was a plus. Now I'm just folding over and stapling the bottom around the edges, pulling slightly taut on the fabric. This way it'll look nice and tight and uniformed. And once again, once that is stapled, I go back and I just trim off all of the extra fabric. I will say this fabric does shed a little bit once you cut it. So I just was pulling all of the frayed edges so it would be less fabric on the floor. And here is the final and finished results. You can add legs to this or a bottom. As you can see, me doing that flip technique made this so seamless. Like it looks like an actual product from the store, I would say. With these large ottomans, I like to double them as coffee tables. So I'm just gonna add a tray and some coasters and some decorative elements just to make it more aesthetically pleasing.
thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it has inspired you to get out there and start making your own trendy pieces for a lot less money. I love how it turned out. I hope you did too. Leave any comments down below on suggestions or anything. I would love to chat with you guys. Please stay tuned for the next video. I have another thrift flip that I have the most great design for in my head. Hopefully it turns out these very nice end tables that I want to make very modern. So please keep your notification bells turned on so you don't miss that video. Please like this video and give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Let me know. So I'll see you guys in the next video.